3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, <clears throat> the first verse of the chapter says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now, that was the message then. It's still the message today, isn't it? And uh, for us to be faithful to the Lord, uh, we have to be faithful in the times that God calls us. You know, perilous times for Timothy, perilous times for us. In uh, chapter 3, verse 12, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Now, that's the message I, I want to bring this morning. Uh, continuing, no matter what the time, uh, perilous times, uh, you know, we might go through some, some good times once in a while, but we still need to continue to follow the Lord. He, he goes on, verse 15, says that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, folks, we have a, a settled salvation, and uh, we have a, a Savior in heaven. We have a, a God's Word that, that is sure. And, and as Christians, uh, we can know that we have a hope in heaven. Timothy had some good examples to follow. You know, even in those early days of, of Christianity, uh, you know, Paul was a good example. And his mother and his grandmother uh, had not only knew the Lord, but were, were faithful they were all pointing him to God's word. He was, you know, Paul was able to say to him, you've known from a child, you've known the way of salvation. And he, he says to him here, and, and he says to us in verse 14, continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. I want to emphasize that this morning, continuing. You know, for, for a church to be somewhere 30 years, somebody had to start it. And people had to be faithful all along the way uh, for it to continue. And one of the things that we need to, to do is we need to continue believing. Did you notice there in, in verse 14, he, he says, you, You've learned, you've been assured, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Verse 15, That from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. We need to keep believing God's word. We're living in a day where, listen, you can lose your job for quoting the scriptures. <laughs> you know, a few years ago, we would have laughed at that. Oh, that'll never happen in Australia. But it has, and it's going to get worse. We live in perilous times. We need to keep believing God's word. Listen, the world is changing. Uh, I was saying to Doyle the other day, it, I'm amazed how quickly it's changing. Uh, people's philosophies, people's culture, people will change. Listen, nobody can tell you I'll always do something for you except God. People will change. Circumstances will change. Many of you never thought you'd be in the circumstances you're in today, a few years ago. We, we don't know. God knows. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. Listen, this, this is the foundation for us. God and, and His word. If you're saved, you were saved by the word of God. That's what he's talking about there in verse 15. From a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, through faith which is in Christ Jesus. It's through the scriptures that we know how to be saved. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Uh, Peter wrote in 1 Peter 1, being born again by the word of God. It's, it's only through God's word that we're able to, to know Christ. We need to continue believing that. Listen, if you've trusted Christ as Savior, Keep believing. <laughs> and if you know anything about God, it came from the Bible. We don't know about God from our own thinking. God had to reveal himself to us. That's what the Bible's all about. Uh, in verse 14, continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. He's not just talking about people. He's talking about God. God has taught us. God has assured us. In verse 16, he says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. God's word is given by inspiration of God. If you want to know the way of salvation, you have to go to God. And if you want to know how to serve the Lord, that comes from the Bible too. 
I, I hear people all the time saying, I'm doing this for God, and, and they're disobeying Scripture by doing it. They're not doing it for God. If we're going to serve God correctly, he says that we have to go to God's Word, the inspired Word of God, that the man of God may be perfect. That means complete, truly furnished unto all good works. If we want to know how to, how to serve the Lord, if we want to know uh, about God, if we want to know how to be saved, we need to believe the Word of God. And I want to encourage you, if you've started believing, continue. <laughs> Keep believing the Word of God. Uh, Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. We've lived in places where there's earthquakes. And let me tell you, it makes you real nervous when the earth starts shaking. And uh, you, you never just have one earthquake. You have about 10 or 20 or 100. You know, they call them aftershocks. Or they're just other earthquakes. And, and, you know, we're so used to thinking, oh, I can, I, I can depend on, you know, uh, my feet are on solid ground kind of thing. But listen, heaven and earth will pass away. But God's word won't pass away. Don't get nervous when you put your feet on, on God's word. <laughs> it, it, won't, it won't move. The word of the Lord endureth forever. Not only do we need to keep believing, we need to keep serving. Look at uh, chapter 4, verse 6. Paul's writing, he says, I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Uh, they tell us historically that this was probably the last book he wrote, and uh, they took him from that prison. He wrote it from prison. They took him from there, and they put him to death. And that's what he's saying. The time of my departure is at hand. I've fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. God is telling us here, continue serving. Listen, if you've started serving the Lord, don't quit. Uh, be faithful. He, he uses these words because it's a battle. He says, I've fought a good fight. L listen, this is not a game we're in. This is not like these uh, video games that people play where, you, you know, it's just a, just a pretend. Life is very real. And uh, when people die, they really go to hell. And it's, it's an important thing. Keep the faith. Don't quit. Be faithful even when those around you change. Look at verse 9 there. Let me read on. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica. Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke was with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he's profitable to me for the ministry. Now he talks about different ones that, uh, that had, had served with him. Uh, listen, we saw some folks on, on the pictures here today. Some have abandoned us for heaven. <laughs> well, that's all right. They're allowed to do that. Uh, you're allowed to go to heaven. Uh, things change. People change. Uh, like he talked about there, uh, some go back to the world. I, I, I remember one man, uh, not this church, but another church, he, one Sunday he brought me a box of everything I'd ever given him, and he never came to church again. And when I visited him, he said, I feel so much better now. You know, the Bible talks about if, if you don't know the Lord, you can only pretend for so long. And uh, some people are going to go back to the world. Some are going to go on to other ministries. That's what he's talking about there with some of these folks. Crescens to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Uh, verse 12, I forgot to read, Tychicus have I sent to Ephesus. You know, things aren't always going to stay the same as to who you serve with. Uh, there's, there's people who've served here. Uh, Brother Bartlett went and started another church. Uh, you know, different ones have, have gone on to other ministries and so on. Uh, we need to be faithful even when those around us change. See, the main hindrance is not other people. It's our own heart. You know, we can use the excuse, oh, somebody offended me or... They did this or they did that. Listen, it's not them. It's you. <laughs> it's like the old song, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Uh, we can continue serving. We can be faithful. We can continue believing. And, and there's one person that particularly stands out there in verse 11, and that's John Mark. Look for and give the second chance. <clears throat> Listen, don't just walk away from people as a Christian. I'm sick of it. Be honest with you. It's just not right. As Christians, we expect a second chance. We should give a second chance. We should be kind and, and gracious. Now, John Mark had, he'd messed up. The first missionary journey, man, he, he bailed out. And when they went to go from the second journey, Barnabas said, let's take John Mark. Paul said, over my dead body. <laughs> and they went their, their separate ways. But now at, 
at the end of his ministry, Paul says, send, send John, send Mark. He's profitable. Listen, things will change. There's always room for another servant. You may have messed up. Listen, jump back in. It, your ministry may change, but there's always a place to serve the Lord. God can use us. God gives us a second chance. Continue believing. Continue serving. And then thirdly, let me say, continue growing in the Lord. I'd like you to, to go to 2 Peter chapter 3. <clears throat> 2 Peter chapter 3, and, and starting in verse 14, <clears throat> he's talking about the end times. He's talking about the end of the world. <clears throat> in verse 14, he says, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things. You know, we're looking for Jesus to come. We're looking for the end times. He says, Seeing you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, and they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Now, we need to continue growing in the Lord. I don't care how long you've been saved, you've still got room to grow. I don't think anybody has accused you of being exactly like Jesus yet. I know they haven't me. And He warns us there in verse 70, beware. Listen, you can, you can get so careless with the things of God. Uh, we have room to grow, and, and we need to do that. And he, he says, don't fall from your steadfastness. Continue on. Keep growing. You know, over and over, that, that theme comes up in, in Scripture. Jesus and uh, God used, used that word continue over and over. John 8, 31, he says, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. We need to continue in God's word. In uh, John 15 and verse 9, I'll just give these to you. I won't expect you to turn to them. Jesus is speaking. He says, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. We need to continue in God's word. We need to continue in God's love. In Acts 13, Paul was, uh, was teaching the, the people, and he said that they, they, were, they persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. We need to continue in the grace of God. Listen, don't go back to works. Don't go back to legalism. Don't think that you can please God by your own effort. Uh, continue in, in God's grace. In Acts 14, verse 22, uh, he told them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Well, whatever the circumstances, continue. Continue in the faith. In Colossians 4, 2, he tells them, uh, Continue in prayer. In Hebrews 13.1, he says, Continue in brotherly love. Let brotherly love continue. Uh, God expects us to not only start, but continue these things. Be steadfast. Be faithful. Now, I found it interesting that both Paul and Peter relate faithfulness to looking for Jesus. Uh, did you notice that as, as we read there in 2 Timothy 4 and verse 8, when he talks about the reward he says, there's laid up a crown of righteousness. He says, it's not only for him, but unto all them also that love his appearing. One of the main motivations for faithfulness is Jesus is coming. Jesus could come today. Glad day, the, the song says. Well, Peter says much the same in, in 2 Peter chapter 3, as we, uh, chapter 3 and verse 13. We, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth. Verse 14, wherefore, beloved, seeing you look for such things, be diligent, be faithful. We're looking for Jesus. Man, if he comes today, we want to be ready. We want to be serving the Lord. We want to be faithful. Now, that's the attitude that God wants us to have. Jesus is coming, and we're looking for his well done, good and faithful servant. That means that every day is given to him. Don't give up. Don't give up. Galatians 6, he says, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now, there's coming a day when 
God will reward his servants. Uh, we need to continue believing. Uh, we need to continue serving. We need to continue growing. Every one of us has room. But let me say this. The problem is, for some, you've never started. You can't continue something unless you start. And, and that applies to salvation. Be saved. If you've never been saved, you can't continue growing. You can't continue believing. Believe. Jesus said, be you must be born again. In John 1.12, the Bible says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. You need to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. There needs to be a start with salvation. The longest journey starts with the first step. And for the Christian journey, it starts with salvation, trusting Christ as your Savior. Are you saved? There's those of you who are saved, and someday you intend to serve the Lord. Well, listen, start. Uh, my goal, my whole ministry has been built around the idea every member of minister. Uh, every one of us should have a, a ministry for the Lord, something that we're doing, something that if we don't do it, people miss it. <laughs> yeah, we should be faithful. Some intend to serve the Lord, but they never start. It's like a, one book of fiction. Uh, the, the old lady said, I should have been a, a great piano player had I ever learned. <laughs> well, listen, don't make that the testimony of your Christian life. I'd have been a great Christian had I ever served. Start serving the Lord at maybe some lowly place. Listen, we can use people to clean the building. That's service for the Lord. It can be. Uh, we need people who will talk to their neighbors. We need Sunday school teachers. We need preachers. We need missionaries. Listen, there's no lack of places to serve. Serve the Lord. Be faithful. The best ability is dependability. Listen, there will always be someone who can do the job better than you. There's plenty of people who can preach better than me. There's even a guy named Bill Bramblett in America who's a better preacher than me. I can't believe it. He's only got one extra T on his name, and he, he can still out-preach me. I don't know. But listen, he's not here. We can be faithful where God calls us. Uh, there's plenty of people with lots of talent, but they're not faithful. Don't be like that. The Bible says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You ever stop to realize that most of what you do in life will be in vain? Most of what you do with your life will be useless. I don't care how many times you brush your teeth, someday you're going to die and they're going to rot. All right? You know, that's probably not a very good illustration, but you know, most of life is like that. You know, we should do it. Do brush your teeth, but uh, yeah, it, it's, it's in vain. It, it's empty. It's useless. It has no eternal value other than that we do it for the Lord. But let me tell you, not what you do for the Lord. That's not in vain. The least thing you do for the Lord, that has eternal value. Don't let your labor be in vain. Number one, be saved. Serve the Lord. Be faithful. If you're not saved, be saved today. What a blessing that would be for you and for others. Jesus could come today. The song says, glad day. Would you be glad? Or would you be separated from God for eternity? Now, we're going to sing that song. It's, it's page 401 in our, our song books. Jesus could come today. Glad day. Glad day. Let's sing that song.